The definition of plankton is anything in a body of water that can't swim against the current. So it could be a huge jellyfish or the tiniest, tiniest phytoplankton. Plankton are so important for our lives here on Earth because they're the bottom of the food chain in the ocean. It starts with phytoplankton, then we move up to zooplankton, then probably larger zooplankton, fish, whales, sharks, everything you can possibly imagine, followed by humans, of course. And without them, we would also be without oxygen. We collect plankton here at the Exploratorium for several exhibits. Seven miles of water travels past the museum every day. So depending on what time of day we're dragging plankton, we're either getting plankton from the middle of the bay where many of our visitors come from or through the Golden Gate where many of our other visitors come from. Like many of the tourists that come and visit us here at the museum from all around the world, we have many plankton visitors from all around the world that travel in the ballasts of ships. Phytoplankton, which is the plants of the plankton, creates more than half of the oxygen on Earth. So without it, we wouldn't exist. Zooplankton, which are the animals of the plankton, uh, then eat the phytoplankton. And that's what we're going to be seeing a lot under the microscope. I try to avoid the foamy stuff on the surface of the water. You can see in my net, it's slimy. Uh, that is dead plankton. If you've ever been around the ocean for a red tide, uh, after the red tide, you might notice all this huge foam. That's all dead plankton, icky, dead. It's mostly protein. Um, and it's not so great for my sample. Uh, luckily, I can skim it off the surface when we get inside. All right, so we're looking at some diatoms. Here on the screen, is a centric diatom. So the way that this diatom is actually shaped is kind of like a tin can. Well, that's a copepod who is now in our way. When the copepod moves, it sort of jerks, jolts, bumps around the screen. That's because it's adapted to swim in seawater. Now, if we're, when we're swimming in seawater, it feels thicker. But when they're swimming in seawater, it feels like they're swimming through molasses or honey. So for them to be able to move around in a, such a thick liquid, they've developed special ways of swimming. Copepods are actually the fastest creature compared to their body size on Earth. And if they were to race a cheetah, they would be much faster. Let's zoom out so we can get a bigger picture of what I like to call Plankton City. I'm gonna scoot the whole slide over so that we're seeing closer to the light on the edge of the slide. There they go. We can, let's see if we can find my favorite plankton, which would be a barnacle. So the barnacle swims a little bit differently. Kind of like, more like a little bug. Um, as compared to the copepods, which really move around quickly. So that's one way I can tell the difference between the two. Just from looking at them, even from far away, I can tell which ones are barnacles and which are copepods uh, by the way that they swim. Boop, boop, boop. There's a couple of different ways that I like to use this microscope. One is just with a slide like this, but. It, I also can look at very large samples using this micro. So say I wanted to look at an entire barnacle as opposed to just its larvae, I could. There we go. So the copepods are really excited about life. So they move around a lot, which often causes our sample to get moved around a lot. There we go. Here he is, right there. Sparkle. 
We found barnacles, we found copepods, we found diatoms, we found noctiluca, we found all the plankton that we want to. So now we're gonna take them and put them into the exhibit. Here we are at Plankton Ballet, one of the exhibits inside of the museum that uses our plankton. And what I'm gonna do is pour the plankton into the exhibit and that's it for setup. The only thing that we do to this exhibit other than clean it is add plankton. Zooplankton like light because that's where their food is in the ocean. Their food is at the top where the phytoplankton live uh, and the phytoplankton photosynthesize, so they must be near the surface. Now that you've had the chance to get up close and personal with phytoplankton and zooplankton, think about the food chain and where you lie within it and how important they are for our existence here on Earth being at the very bottom. Mm -hmm.